Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to look at some unconventional uses of the Godot scene tree and how they can replace more traditional methods of creating and organizing data for your games. In case you weren't aware, the scene tree is an implementation of the data structure known to computer science as, well, a tree. The scene tree, as all trees are, is composed of nodes. Nodes can be anything. A 3D mesh, a sound, a collision shape, a bundle of data, you name it. The tree doesn't care, as long as they all inherit from the same base class. In Godot's case, that class is called, you guessed it, node. Nodes are defined by their relationships to other nodes in the tree. Every node except the root of the tree has a single parent, and optionally can have multiple children, which are also nodes that can have their own children, and so on. As you may be aware, you can create new trees on the fly and add them to your scene tree. You do this whenever you spawn an enemy by instantiating a scene loaded from a .tscn file. It's tempting, then, to assume that scenes are simply things that go in your game, but they don't have to be. Since a scene is literally just a loadable file, you can use them as the gods of computer science intended, as data. Normally, we use resource files for our game data, and this method doesn't change that. In fact, scenes are really just resource files themselves. Godot doesn't care what you put in your tree as long as it's a class that derives from Node. So rather than fill it full of monsters and explosions, let's use it as what it is, a map of the relationships between nodes. One of the most intuitive uses of such a data structure is the branching paths between conversation points in a dialogue tree, or the story beats of a choose-your-own-adventure game. We'll look at the latter example now, and with a little modification, you can use it to implement the former pretty easily. If there's enough demand, maybe I'll even do a video on it in the future. Let me know in the comments whether or not you'd like to see one. Before we get started, we'll need a couple of UI prefabs, one to display text and one to get choices from the player. In fact, I highly recommend that you watch my tutorial on creating a dynamic choice dialog because we're going to use it in this project. I'll quickly skim over how it works here, but for a more in-depth explanation, you'll need to watch that video. Anyway, there's nothing magic about creating a text dialog. Here's a very, very basic one with a continue button. We use the onReady tag to grab a reference to it, as well as its label node, and away we go. We do likewise for the choices dialog. We'll need to connect a handler function to the choices dialog selected signal, so let's do that too. The first thing we need to do is decide on the format of our nodes. Let's create a new script called story node that extends node. This node will represent each beat of our story. Add an exportable variable called story text, and for sanity's sake, make it a multi-line edit box. We're going to be typing lots of text into these things, and we want to be able to see what we're doing. Each node should also, potentially, present the user with a list of choices. If it does, the user can select one of those choices to decide where the story goes next. Add an array of strings to your node called choices, and make that exportable as well. Finally, add a string called jump to node. If this string contains a node path, the game will automatically jump to that node when the player advances the story. We're now ready to start letting the player choose their own adventure. Create a new scene and select other node for its type. When presented with the list of choices, select your story node class. Click on the root node of the scene tree, which is the story node you just added. Add some narrative text to the story text box in the inspector, then give the user a few choices as to what to do by putting some strings into the choices array. Here's how I set up mine so you can see an example. So, how do we control where the user goes next? Each element in the choices array maps to a child of the story node in order of its index. So, element 0 in the array is the first child of the node, which has child index 0, and element 1 is the second child, which has child index 1, and so on. Those children are also story nodes. As a result, we simply traverse the tree based on the player's input and display the story text of the new node. First, I'll set up the story branches that relate to the choices that I presented in the root node. As you can see, I named the nodes based on what choices they map to so that we can tell at a glance how the story goes by looking at the scene tree. At this point, you may be asking yourself, why don't we simply use the name of the node as the choice text and query the node's children to build our list of choices rather than use a separate array? And the reason is that there are certain special characters that you may want to use in that text that Godot doesn't allow in node names. Anyway, now that we have some story beats set up, let's write the code that walks through the tree based on the player's input. It's really simple. First thing we need to do is create a node to handle our story. I called mine, convincingly enough, story. Story is a UI control that contains our choice and narration components. The first thing you should do is grab references to those components so that your script can use them. Next, create an exportable variable to hold your story tree. Scenes are resources of type packed resource, so that's the type we need to assign to our variable so it handles drag and drop properly. Once you've done that, drag your story scene into the inspector variable and you'll be ready to go. 
Godot will load your packed scene as part of the initialization of the story node. And all you have to do is instantiate it. So let's do that. I've defined a function called start story, which you should call whenever you want to start a new game. Start story instantiates a new copy of the story scene and sets the variable start beat equal to the result of that function call, which is the root node of our story tree. We need to keep a reference to this root node because we won't be able to access it otherwise. Since this tree isn't being added to the scene, none of the usual get tree methods like get root will work on it. We also need a reference to the current story beat, which is the node that the player is currently interacting with. When a story begins, that variable is equal to start beat. We then tell our story to narrate that beat. The narrate method sets the text display in the UI to the narration text of the passed in node, makes sure it's visible, and then enables the advance button for the dialog box. I didn't go over the actual functionality of the dialog box, but that's okay. All you need to know is that when you press it and it's done displaying text, it fires a signal called advance beat, which I've connected to the on advance beat method in the story script. Let's look at that method next. It gets called when the dialog box is done showing the current node's text and needs to decide what to do next based on several factors. The first thing we need to do is see whether or not the current beat has a jump to node string set. If it does, that overrides all other logic. Simply call the jump to node method, which we haven't defined yet. Next, we need to check if the current story beat has no children. If it has no children, we've come to one of our endings. I simply emit a signal here. My game UI connects to that signal and goes back to the title screen when it fires. If the beat has children, then we want to see if the node has any choices defined. If it does, set the choices dialog's choices property to the beat's choices and display the dialog. If you haven't already done so, connect the dialog's selected signal to a method called onChoiceSelected, which takes a single input parameter. We also hide the narration dialog's advance button to force the player to advance the story via selecting a choice. If the node has no choices defined and isn't a childless end node, then it simply gets the node's first child as the new story beat and tells the game to narrate it. This allows us to chain story beats together without requiring huge boxes of text. Finally, let's handle the player making a choice. In the onChoiceSelected method, simply get the child of the current beat with the index passed into the method and narrate it. Finally, let's take a quick look at the jump to node method. This one is really simple. All you're doing is forcing the current beat to the indicated node path and then narrating it. You get this node path in the exported jump to node property of your story node. And in order to get the exact node path of the node that you want to jump to, all you have to do is right click on the node in your scene tree and say copy node path. And you're done. Try creating a short story yourself. If you're feeling adventurous, you can easily expand this template to add things like background graphics and music to create a full-fledged visual novel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more game gems. See you next time.